Hey, Vlad here, DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous video, we learned the ins and outs of Jitterate, a command line tool which generates files and directories based on templates which are usually published to GitHub. And today we're going to start building our own SPT multi-build clean architecture Jitterate template, which is a mouthful. <music> Now, clean architecture is a topic of its own, and there is even an entire book about it written by none other than Uncle Bob, who pieced it together based on all the other architectures out there and also decades of personal experience developing enterprise-grade software with plethora of technologies and programming languages. After thinking about it for a while, I decided not to dedicate an entire video to clean architecture just yet because I wanted to make these videos focused on Jitterate. Having said that, clean architecture or architecture in general is one of my favorite topics in software development and I will for sure create videos about it in the future, maybe even near future. Let's see. For now, let me just butcher a couple of definitions so that we can start hacking on our Jitterate template. Let's start with the definition of architecture itself. And for this, let me give you a couple of examples what architecture is not. AWS, Rancher, Docker, microservices, monoliths, none of this is architecture. Unless you're a DevOps person, then maybe for you it is. HTTP, REST, web, terminal, embedded, mobile, None of this is architecture. This is simply the delivery mechanism for your application. Message buses, message queues, push, pull, synchronous, asynchronous, non-blocking, none of it is architecture. These are just implementation details. Spark, Kafka, Postgres, Mongo, Scala, Drivers, Ruby, none of it is architecture. These are just tools. Eclipse, Sublime, Idea, VS Code, again, not architecture, this is just tooling. Now that we have all of that nonsense out of the way, what actually is architecture? For the purposes of this discussion, architecture is all about dependencies. What depends on what, what waits for what, what needs to change when the requirements change and so on. Now, what is good architecture? And again, I'm trying to avoid going in depth here. Good architecture should allow us to change our software with minimal friction. And as I already mentioned a couple of years ago in a video about the differences between computer science software development and simply programming, software development is all about change, which is why it's called software in contrast to hardware. And as Uncle Bob himself puts it, a good architecture maximizes the number of decisions not made. Now, even though clean architecture is not a silver bullet, it is a very good starting point if you're developing a web application or a CLI or even a mobile application. So unless you're writing a, your own operating system or something embedded or maybe a computer game, you should be good to go. Unfortunately, clean architecture as all the other architectures require quite a bit of boilerplate, which is, you know, the common concern point about this, and this is exactly what our Jitterate template is going to attempt to solve. There will be two parts, and in this video, we're simply going to set up an SPT multi build, which will set up all the dependencies and make sure that they point in the appropriate directions. Okay, so I'm in an Ubuntu virtual machine, it's the Ubuntu 1804, and I'm just going to open my terminal and I'm going to go into my dev folder, which is currently empty, and I'm just going to say SBT new found weekends jitterate.g8 and as we have seen in the previous video this is a template for jitterate templates okay so this is always the starting point and once it loads we're going to call this template clean architecture template clean architecture template like this okay jitterate version yes sure spt version yes this is the recent one all right so we have this folder over there and as mentioned in the previous video we need to make sure that it has the ending of g8 so we're going to move the clean architecture into clean architecture dot g8 and in fact because our users are going to be using this from github later uh, i'm going to trim it down like this i'm going to call it cat clean architecture template it has nothing to do with cats or category theory or whatsoever okay so now let's do that so we have only this one folder, cat g8. Let's open this with Visual Studio Code like this. Now, by the end of these two videos, I want to add this whole thing to GitHub and also to the uh, Jitterate uh, Viki, you know, to the list of all the templates. So I wanna make sure that everything is tidy and clean. So we're gonna start with the readme. I'm gonna call it readme.md. So the symbol is gonna change. So if we open that, as we learned in the previous video, there is, a, there is some uh, stuff for the license over there. So I'm just gonna cut all of it out and I'm actually going to create a file called license license like this okay so this way when github will recognize that we have a file called license it will actually display a button uh, to display the license okay so i'm going to save that and uh we don't need this over here right we're just going to say this is a template license okay and uh we're just going to say written in 2019 let me actually create more space 2019 by me that's my full name 
and that's my email address like this okay and uh, what do we need uh, what is that we don't need that I'm gonna be the only author the extent possible blah 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 I actually want this thing to be uh, one line like that uh, templates power worldwide mm -hmm. let's actually have an empty line over here this template is zip script without any warranty I uh, see mm -hmm. yeah we actually don't need to change that we actually can do that and that so remove the dot like this okay this is going to be a a, a very very uh, simple license okay so um, as a reminder you know this is a creative commons license which means it's a zero attribution license again I'm not a lawyer but from what I understand is are the people are going to be able to uh, take this template and do whatever the hell they want with it without even uh, mentioning that uh, I was the one who created it okay so we're going to create a readme and because I don't want to waste our time I'm just going to copy it from my script like that okay paste it over here like this okay so uh, Visual Studio Code allows us to do that click here okay so this is going to be our read, uh, readme a generate SPT Scala template for clean architecture cat stands for clean architecture template it has no relation to the cat's library category theory or well the actual cats and this is how we're we're going to be able to use it we will just say SPT new dev inside you cat g8 as we have seen in the previous video it will just download it from github okay and this is also a link to a blog post maybe I can click on it gonna do something yes so it opened it in Firefox this is a blog article to clean architecture you might go through this uh, as well if you want and as I mentioned already there's a, an entire book about it I'm gonna have links down in the description all right let me close that let me close the readme let me close the readme over here I also close the license and open the sidebar like this so I'm gonna keep cleaning up this template a little bit before we even started uh, starting talking about clean architecture and I'm gonna start creating clean architecture and explaining it to you on the fly so to say okay so we're gonna go to build SPT as we have seen in the previous video this is kind of too much for me so all I need is uh, this so that goes away all I need is that all I need is at command alias test whoops test is going to be g8 test like this so we don't need this 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 whole thing we don't need this resolver all right we don't need that not sure what these rendering issues are okay now it's gone okay let's do that let's do that I prefer to use the sequence let's press enter over here let's mark the command spaces like that let's do this let's do Let's do that. And for some reason, it says space is four. I want to be indent using space. In yes, two. All right. Yeah, two. There we go. All right. So we don't need this. We don't need that. There we go. All right. So let's go next to uh, get ignore. Uh, let's also add dot idea dot bloop. I just always do this, okay, even though in this video we're not going to use any of that. Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm also going to mark them all. And I'm going to sort them, sort lines ascending like this. Uh, Travis, I'm just going to leave it alone. So pretty much done with all of these. Let's go into project, uh, build properties, that's fine. Plugins, okay, that's also fine. We don't need this, however. Right, this can also be an empty line over here. As I explained in the previous video, this is simply the Jitterate plugin and the scripted plugin, which we're actually not gonna not gonna touch today. All right. So let's also go into source uh, main G8. We can pretty much actually uh, remove everything that is in there. So let's just um, let's just delete the folder. Where is it? Delete like this. Okay. All right. So we still need the G8 folder. Okay. Source main G8 like this. Okay. So this should this is the, you know the clean. Um, clean uh, jitterate template okay for jitterate templates okay we can actually even go over here uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna use the terminal but you know let's have it down there all right so let's collapse this one and the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna go to the G8 folder and we're going to create a file called default properties and I just want to fill it out so that we don't have to touch it again okay so we're gonna have a description which is going to be uh, let me actually create more space the description is going to be a jitterate template for clean architecture like this there's going to be a name right obviously my my project there's going to be an organization which is going to be com dot organization like this there will be a package which is going to be based on the organization like this tab and i'm going to format that as lower package like this 
Okay, so again, this is typical, you know, for example, if you have uh, akka.io, but the package is going to be called just akka, or in my case, you know, there's comdev inside you, but I might want to be able to uh, name the packages just dev inside you. Okay, this is the only reason for, for this. Okay, let's also do spt version, which is going to be maven org.scala, scala hyphen spt, we did this thing already in the previous video, stable, and let's also do scala version. Scala version equals main maven, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do many um, uh, SPT related things uh, in this template because I want this template to be as, as much reusable as possible. For example, I'm not uh, super happy with every tiny default that SPT comes with. So usually if this was like my personal template, I would change uh, many defaults. But in this case, I will try to make this as reusable as possible. And in fact, this entire template, even though it will look as if it is complete, it is not designed to be entirely complete. So feel free to fork it, adapt it to exactly what you need and use it. All right. So uh, this is pretty much all that we need to do. So for example, we could actually go and try to to, uh, to create this template already, uh, which we probably should do, you know, just in case. So let's go over here, for example, and let's just say sbt new file colon slash slash cat dot uh, just so that just so that I see if I if I have made any typos over here. Okay, so we're in the folder above. We're trying to use this template to to create something, and what we're seeing here name is my project. Sure, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Everything is fine. Okay, so it created this um, folder inside. Uh, where is it? What? Mm -hmm. Name my project. Oh, it didn't create anything because we have absolutely no files. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna create a dot keep file uh, just just uh, just so that we can see how it is created. We did all of these playing around, uh, you know, in the previous video. Let's actually start it by you know creating a, an actual project. Okay, so let's create a new file. And we're gonna put it into project hyphen build dot properties like this. Okay, and over here we're gonna say spt version equals, and we're gonna use this variable, right? So this spt um, underscore version like this. It's the uh, this one this variable. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the build file, right? So a new file, uh, build.spt. I just always need to make sure that it's in, in the right folder. Okay. So we're going to say this build version, because this is going to be a multi-build, we want uh, the version and the Scala version uh, to be the same for all the sub-projects. Okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to say equals, right? It's going to be 0 .0 0.0.1 hyphen snapshot like this. Let's copy that. Let's say that this one is going to be Scala version. And for some reason, it became popular to do to do that like this. And the Scala version is going to be this Scala Scala version like this. Okay. So again, this is uh, this variable. Okay. So all we need to do over here is we're going to have a root project. You know, this is going to be the one that is not going to contain any sources because this is very typical for multi builds. You know, all the sub modules will cont contain the sources, but the root project is not going to contain them. Okay. As the name, we're going to actually use uh, this variable. You know, the name. Okay. So we're going to do dollar dollar, and inside of it, we're going to have name. We're going to have format equals norm, right? So it's going to uh, normalize the name for something that the Scala compiler is going to be happy with. And it might contain actually hyphens. And in case it contains hyphens, we're going to use these, um, you know, these back ticks. Okay. So this is going to be our project, right? So it's going to be project in file, whoops, dot. Okay. And it's going to have settings. And the only settings that it's going to have is going to be the actual name. And in this case, we're going to use the name variable directly without formatting it in any way. Okay. So now we can actually try and uh, run it. So we can do the same thing. Okay. Over here, sbt new file catch 8 It's going to take a few seconds to start sbt. Okay. Let's do, for example, let's actually leave it my project, com.organization. La la la, everything is fine. Okay, let's see what it what it uh, created. Okay, so we can go into my project. Okay, there's only uh, build SPT, so we can cat into it real quick. Okay, let me create more space. Okay, so this is what it did, right? So it put a 213.0 in there. It put my project in there. It normalized it over here. There's backticks around it. Um, nothing super fancy. Okay, and also there is a project over there. There's the build properties in there, cat into that. So it put the 128 in there. Okay, cool. So let's actually get out of here, get out of here, and also remove this. Okay, so now we're left with just this uh, cat G8 like this. Now, because this is going to be a multiple project, uh, it is a common practice to allow commands to propagate to sub modules. So for example, if we're in the root project and we're saying compile, it is common to propagate this command to all the sub modules and compile all of them. Uh, it is also common to do this for the test, but not for running, for example. And the way we do this is we go over here, we say aggregate, 
and over here we're going to specify all the projects right so project one project two and so on and so on okay so the first one is going to be entities and I'm gonna say a few things about it in just a second just let me finish typing it okay so this is just going to be very similar so it's just gonna be a lazy uh, lazy val it's gonna be called entities okay and it's going to be a project and it's going to be in file and in this case the folder is just going to be called entities like this okay so in fact we will go and create a folder called Mm -hmm. new folder called entities there will be nothing inside I will say a few things about it in just a few seconds now entities is probably going to be the most confusing and yet at the same time the simplest project because uh, or module because what it will contain is going to be the domain specific logic in contrast to the application specific logic right another way to say domain specific logic is to say this is going to be application agnostic logic let me unpack this a little bit okay so what we're creating here is a microservice or you know it might be a monolith or something in between whatever it is is. it is its own application and the logic inside of it is specific to the use cases of this application and it might be the first application that we're creating however you know if things go well if our company is going to keep growing we're going to create a second application a third application and a fourth application and they will all have their own application specific use cases application specific logic however all of these applications will belong to the same domain because chances are that our company is providing services in some very very specific industry which is just another way of same domain let's go through an example let's say that we're Netflix now Netflix is built upon hundreds and hundreds of microservices and by the way I don't want you to get attached to the word microservice uh, so we're just gonna say application so Netflix is built based on hundreds of applications and each of them has their specific use cases right so there will be an application for uh, story movies there will be an application for uh, streaming movies there will be an application for uh, serving thumbnails there will be an application just for admins that they can add movies or you know modify uh, titles or thumbnails or, or whatnot okay now all of these applications are going to be inside of this very specific domain for Netflix which is movies or maybe even more general cinema so all of these applications will end up talking about the same things like movies thumbnails trailers uh, actors directors and whatnot all of these will be collectively called as entities it is very typical for entities to be simple data structures but they might also be objects not necessarily in the object oriented uh, way of saying object but just in the sense that there will be some logic attached to them and you know this logic might also contain tests right so this is going to be this module called entities above everything else that we do and ideally this would be a binary dependency right so it would not be a part of this multi-build right because again like every application every microservices all wherever it's going to be built on clean architecture so it's going to be built on this multi-build so each and every one of them does not need this source code dependency on entities so ideally this would be a binary dependency but in our case I want to be I want this thing to be self-contained so I'm just gonna uh, create it as a source code dependency by the way the entities need to be kept very very small because again this uh, module is going to be at the top of everything else on Netflix right with hundreds of applications so even though a entity an entity like movie might contain hundreds of attributes uh, probably most of the applications are not gonna use nearly all of them right so uh, you want to have a smallest version possible in these entities for example in Scala a uh, movies entity would be just a case class movies and maybe with some sort of um, uh, movie ID and the type of the ID by the way would be just a string and it would uh, represent not some technical ID from a Mongo database or a Postgres database you know with different types like object ID or in no it's just gonna be a string and ideally this should be a conceptual ID right so for example books have ISBN and apparently there is no such thing for movies well there is there is something for movies but nobody's using it and it turns out that most people are using the IMDB IDs for this okay so a typical um, data structure entity for movies would be just a case class movies with just the ID or maybe uh, you know the original language and the title in that language right so maybe these three attributes okay so there's not gonna be something like lengths and you know actors and all of this stuff it's gonna be stored somewhere else right it's this tiny very 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 tiny thing somewhere at the top now let's talk about the application itself so the next one that we're going to add is going to be the core of the application okay so we can just pretty much copy that and we can go over here and we can say that this is going to be the core of the application or the heart of the application and it will you know this, it will contain the application specific logic and it will know how to use the domain specific logic so it needs to have the dependency on the entities okay so it's gonna say it depends on uh, entities right so we're grabbing uh, this lazy val over here right and let's not forget to create a folder over here a new folder called core 
like this. As I already mentioned, I don't want to uh, change any SBT defaults, but there's just one weird thing uh, where, S where SBT uh, specifies the class pass dependency. So what we did right now is that core depends on entities, but only the source main folder, right? So only the production sources. I also want to specify that the tests in the core should also depend on the tests in entities. Okay, so we do this by just having a percentage symbol over here, and now I'm going to use a variable called one to one class path dependencies, which is a horrible name, but I don't have anything anything better. Okay, so over here we can go and define it, lazy val one blah blah blah. Okay, it's just a string, and this is the syntax, right? So we just need to say that compile depends on compile, and then semicolon test also depends on test, like this. Okay, that's all we need. So let's have an example. Again, let's say that we're Netflix and let's say that we're creating an application that, uh, you know, manages thumbnails, okay? Which also means that in the entities project, uh, we already have at least two entities, right? So we have an entity for movies and we have an entity for um, uh, thumbnails. So your user stories might end up looking something like this. As a user, I wanna be able to upload a thumbnail. As a user, I wanna be able to uh, know when the thumbnail was last uh, updated or when it was created and, and so on. Now, core, ironically, will be the smallest uh, sub-module that you have uh, because uh, most of the applications these days are just CRUD applications, so there's very little business logic. It's basically, you know, grab something from the database and display this on the website, and if the user puts something into a form, just throw into the database. And in the middle, there's only a little bit of validation logic and, uh, I don't know, maybe trimming or, 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 or things like this. Okay, so uh, you will be surprised how uh, how small the application, uh, the application logic is if you um, don't pollute it with was uh, all the implementation details like the web servers and databases and whatnot. The next one is actually going to be the biggest one. It's not gonna be visible from here. The next one is going to be called delivery. This is going to be the delivery mechanism for your application, right? So typical examples would be like a web uh, application or a CLI, command line interface. This could actually be, you know, an entire, you know, mobile application if you want, um, you know, Android in this case, because we're using Scala, um, okay? So it's gonna be called delivery and it will depend on core. Okay, so it's sort of below, uh, but you know, we're gonna display it on the side, right? So we have entities, then we have core, and then we have delivery on the side. Okay, let's not forget to create a folder. Let's go over here, create a folder called delivery. Okay, like this. So if this was a you know web application or an HTTP endpoint, then uh, you know the your you know requ the request would come in, and the, you know there would be I don't know JSON as a payload or whatever, and then it will be converted into something that the core can understand. It, this might as well actually be an entity, but very very uh, often this is some some intermediate data structure, right? So it's going to be some uh, case class. It's collectively known as the request module, right? And then uh, re re sorry, not not module, request model, and it's being passed into the core of the application. A, the core of, a, of the application does something with it and produces the so-called response module, which again, it might be an entire entity or it might be just an intermediate data structure, right? So it comes back to the delivery mechanism. The delivery mechanism knows that it's a web application, so it knows how to convert it to JSON, for example, and send it back. What's interesting to know is that even though we're not gonna do this, but you can actually have multiple delivery mechanisms, right? So you can have another one over here, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, delivery hyphen CLI, for example, okay? So you can have multiple of them, uh, you know, it's. Uh, Multiple projects are very, very, um, very, very useful if you know how to how to set them up uh, properly. Oh my God, what am I doing? Jesus Christ! Delivery hyphen CLI. That's what I wanted. All right, so. Uh, you might have a bunch of them and you can still work in, you know, in one strain, uh, so to say, of this multi-build, uh, even though the others may be like not even compiling, okay? So because it will, because it knows what depends on what, okay? So you could have, for example, this and you can write a CLI, you know, for the same, for the same core uh, of the business logic for uh, someone who is probably like an admin at, at Netflix, right? So they don't need fancy interfaces. They just need, uh, you know, to get their work done, which is also the reason why, you know, the internal interfaces usually look very ugly because nobody... Uh, you know, wants to invest uh, resources into them. All right, so the next one is going to be the persistence mechanism, right? Which is gonna be typically a database or, you know, a file system, or it can actually be yet another microservice, right? So, you know, if, you, if you're asking your database to construct entities for you, your, 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 your um, persistence layer to construct entities for you, you know, it might go to some other uh, microservice to, to do that, okay? So it's gonna be called just persistence, persistence, okay? And let's not forget to create a folder for it, okay, folder persistence like this all right now the same as in the delivery somewhere in the middle of delivery there will be a class which will act as a client for something in the core of the application similar to that there will be something in the core of the application which will act as a client for something in the persistence layer right so it will ask the persistence layer to construct 
entities or some intermediate data structures for it so that it can so that the core of the application can construct the response module uh, mo model and pass it back to the delivery mechanism. Same as delivery, you can actually have multiple uh, persistence uh, sub-modules, or you can actually use multiple databases or a mixture of databases and files in, in one sub-module if you want. Notice one important thing, that both delivery and persistence, they depend on core. However, they don't know anything about each other, so there is no way that you know a beginner on your team uh, will uh, circumvent the logic in the core of the application and go straight from the web server uh, straight to your database, for example, right? Which is a very, very good thing. All right, let's move on to the very last uh, project which is going to be basically the dependency injection point which is also going to be just the entry point into your application and we're just going to call it main like this main so a main has a dependency on both delivery and on core and therefore it basically has a dependency on everything else because it makes sense this is the point where you know you need to actually inject your dependencies and let's not forget to create a folder create a folder called main like this. And by the way, this is the minimal amount of uh, sub-modules that you need. But again, this is not the maximum amount. You can have uh, even, even even more, right? So uh, use this as a, as a starting point, okay? So we have uh, entities, we have core, we have delivery, we have persistence, and we have the uh, main, okay? So it should be five. One, two, three, four, five. And also because this whole thing is going to be just one application, I also want to add an uh, SPT alias, okay? I'm just going to add it over here, right? Because it's going to be one... Um, uh, you know, one application. So uh, every time people say run, I don't, I don't want them to care in which sub module they are. I want them always to run, uh, you know, the main method from from the from the main project. Okay. So uh, let's go and start creating some files. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the entire directory structures inside of them. We're not going to create any files. We're going to do this in the next video with the scaffoldings. Okay. But we're going to create directory structures inside of core delivery entities, main and persistence. Now there are two schools of thought about this. There is this thing called jar hell. And without going into details, it's basically a very nasty thing which breaks your application even though it compiled. Right. So basically at runtime, it will not allow your application to be assembled. And the most common uh, cause for this is that uh, people put packages with the same name into multiple jars. And then it's just a matter of time until someone also puts a class with exactly the same name into these separate jars, but again with the same uh, package names. And so you have a conflict and then at runtime, the class loader will obviously pick only one of them and most of the time it picks the wrong one. So the easiest way to avoid this is to use a tool specifically designed for resolving name conflicts called package. In fact, in some other languages, like for example, C-sharp, the keyword package doesn't exist. What they call it instead is namespace. So there's a literal keyword called namespace in C-sharp. Okay, so what most people do is they go and they create a package for core, they go and create a package for delivery, package for entities, package for main, package for persistence. I'm not going to do that because this requires a lot of uh, unnecessary imports, right? So basically every time you're in persistence, you always have to start by importing core, right? And then you always have to import entities all the time. So you have all of these uh, weird imports. What we're going to do instead is we're going to basically create a, a situation in which jar hell is likely. However, because this is a very controlled scenario, we will be able to uh, ensure that um, this will not happen actually as often as it as it can, right? Because we, we know exactly what to put where, and so the name conflicts will be avoided, okay? So let's go and start uh, by creating a first directory. Let's start with the core, and let me actually create more space. Now, um, in the previous video, you have seen how we can use the template fields. Maybe I should actually open them so that we can see them. Maybe, maybe like that. Hopefully that's going to be enough. Okay. So, uh, you have seen that we can create folders and we can use these, uh, field names in there. Uh, what I haven't showed you is that Visual Studio Code can also, um, help you with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into core and I'm going to create a file called dot keep but I'm going to create it very, very deeply. Okay. Very, very deeply in the structure. So over here, I'm going to use template fields, but then I'm going to use slashes and Visual Studio Code will create a bunch of folders, right? So it's going to be very, very nested what I'm doing right now. Okay. So I'm asking it to create source main Scala. Now I'm going to use the package variable. Okay. So this one over here, okay. I'm going to go and say a package. Okay. And I'm going to, I want to format it. I'm going to say do lower package and package. 
like this okay then I want to do slash okay over here slash and now I want to use another variable in this case it's going to be the name variable and we're gonna use the same thing we're gonna say lower but in this case we're gonna say word right so if, if it's something like like to do app I wanted to um, put them together instead of creating a folder for to do and then a folder for app okay so it's just gonna be like this name okay and now we're pretty much done so now if I'm gonna press enter uh, Visual Studio Code will create these folders for me it will create source main Scala then this one and then this one and then inside of it it is going to create a file called keep and before I do that I'm actually gonna copy this whole thing okay I'm gonna do that I'm gonna press enter as we have seen as we have seen it created that I also want to create the same one for tests okay so I'm gonna go again new folder I'm going to paste that I just need to go over here and replace replace this with test okay so I want exactly the same thing in the test okay and we need to use this keep uh, file because otherwise it's not going to be created at all and we're gonna go through all of them and we're gonna add, add exactly the same structure okay so I'm just gonna copy this folder copy delivery uh, paste and main paste and entities mm -hmm, where is it paste and persistence paste okay one thing though I'm gonna go into entities and I'm going to remove this last folder because remember the entities they contain the domain agnostic logic right so this one last one is very application specific right so this is basically the name of the application this is not what we want so I'm gonna move the keep file up and I'm going to remove this last folder okay like this and let's not forget the test let's move it up like this and remove that folder okay like this all right let me collapse all of these again and the last thing that we're going to do today is we're going to go to main to this very last folder and we're going to rename this folder to uh, this file to main.scala so we don't need the dot keep and we're going to come on close it hold up main this one okay let me double click all right and we're going to generate a main um, main file here okay okay so we're going to go to package we're going to use the package variable oh come on gonna use the package variable package we don't need the sidebar okay so we're gonna have the package and we're gonna format it the same way so we're gonna say lower comma package let's close that all right let's duplicate the line let's do the same thing for the name we're gonna have name over here we're gonna have lower here and we're gonna have word over here okay and over here we're just gonna have a main extends app okay print line okay I'm gonna have uh, my favorite hyphens I'm just gonna copy and paste it from my script because I don't want to use the Unicode okay these are my favorite hyphens I'm gonna make them famous okay like this like that and over here we're gonna say that this is gonna be hello world world like that no, let's not have that let's not have that okay so we have a main file so now let's go for the first time and actually uh, try to use our template okay so we're gonna go and say SBT new file call slash slash cat dot g8 like this all right so let's change everything let's say that we're creating a to-do app like this and this is going to be com dot dev inside you and the package is going to be just dev inside you and the yes, spt version is fine the scala version is fine as well all right so it created this to-do app let's go in there all right like this let me maximize this i'm gonna also launch sbt so that it can you know it can start up let's see so we open core source main scala dev inside you to do app and there is a keep and there should also be a test where's the test one did i forget to put the keep file into the test oh man source main scala i probably put it in the wrong into the wrong folder okay let me remove that remove that remove that close that rm to do app okay let's see what i did wrong uh core source what happened was that this dot keep thing is a folder and not a not a file why did it do that over here it was a it was a file over here oh maybe mm -hmm. okay doesn't matter anyway uh, I can just remove that and I can create a file instead instead called dot keep okay I'm gonna do this for the others and I'm gonna cut it out from the video all right so let's do this again let's go over here okay let's do that so again it's gonna be a to do app and it's gonna become dot com dot dev inside you and the package is just going to be dev inside you yes that's fine code to do app let me maximize that open sbt right away all right so let's see so okay so now we have both now we have both that one is correct delivery is correct 
uh, over here we have entities is correct whoops here it's correct persistence is correct let me also run it in the meantime um, what else uh, main main is correct I'm gonna go to main and it says package dev inside you package to do app and it runs our hello world all right so as I already mentioned in the next video we're gonna create the scaffold so we're gonna create an entire you know entire files in, inside of here for now let me just go here and let me also uh, remove the to-do app and uh, what I'm gonna do now is again I want this to be you know a full-blown project so I'm gonna uh, commit it to, to github okay so let me go into into here okay let's say that this is a repository in fact let me open the sidebar let me close all the files because there might be colors and I like colors okay so get in it get add get commit hyphen am this is going to be initial um, initial commit in fact let's not call it initial commit let's call it um, video 2 even though this is the first commit but this is the second video in that series so I'm just gonna call it um, G8 okay like this video 2 okay now we need to go to github and we need to create a repository called cat.g8 let's just create a repository like this and we can do these two now let's go let's paste them like that all right let's go over here reload and we should see our template perfect and let's actually try to do this thing this thing and uh yeah let's go up and let's do that and it should be able to use our template straight from github like that okay let's just do this 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 okay created the my project all right open it up there we go should work exactly the same way let's just go into spt okay should run this main file however it called it main Calm organization my project because this time I use the default uh, default names for for the variables okay and once it loads I can just run the main once to see the hello world it called it my project okay so it's compiling blah 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 everything's fine let's actually look into the build uh, all right so it used the 213 uh, let's look into build properties it used the 128 everything is fine awesome so as I already mentioned in the next video we're going to create the scaffolds and as always it's been Vlad DevInsideYou.com don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you and if you find my videos valuable consider supporting me on Patreon and most importantly take care